Hey y'all, it's your girl Stephanie's is Wrestling Color Podcast right here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like the video, hit me in the comments. I love talking to you guys. Um, follow me on the Instagram, the Twitter. What else? Tell a friend and tell a friend and tell a friend you hate to come listen to the show. I am uploading like a blitz of content. For you guys to hold on to for a minute because I launched another podcast. It's a political pop culture podcast because, you know, I guess I don't have nothing else to do, you know, since I also got into my master's degree program and all of that. But whatever, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get that off the ground for a minute. So I'm going to give y'all a lot for y'all to chew on plus the other over 100 episodes that's already on the page plus these newer episodes that I'm posting up so to keep y'all you know keep y'all comfy or whatever so what we talking about today is something that's very sad something that I I, I mentioned on my one of the previous pods that um, Paul Heyman is out at the Raw as the um, executive producer and how I'm concerned and I'm afraid for the female talent over there and the talent um, of different ethnicities now that it's Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon essentially going back to their regular tried and true formula which is you know tits ass big white man blonde that's it sprinkle in here and there comical ethnic comedy and all that bullshit I'm really worried about that so Shayna Baszler she's been in NXT for a minute and she thrived in NXT because NXT is a place where <sighs> Triple H honed his talent and treated them like kids and family and like he's daddy H and you could tell when they win a, a trophy or they win a tournament how he's right there to give thumbs up and he's smiling and he's real hands on and 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 you know he's hugging the talent and they just feel real close and it's, it's a camaraderie it's a family and when these people are called up you know and you see them get devastated on the main roster it's just like all of that energy a fan puts in as well as Triple H and only to see them falter get destroyed and and ragdolled by Vince McMahon and his bullshit it's very disheartening so Shanna Baszler um, is one of the uh, one of the ladies that had a long NXT reign she was built to be unbeatable and if you beat her you like it was a, a defeat you know it was like whoa you know she was right behind Oscar like no one's ready for Oscar and Oscar was a monster in NXT and you know Vince McMahon doesn't know what to do with anyone who's not white and blonde or white and male so it gets real confusing and it gets rough when Vince McMahon takes the reins so Shayna Baszler is a lesbian that's the first thing. Shayna Baszler is, um, there's nothing, I mean, she's, there's nothing sexy. She's not like, come fuck me, woman. She's like, I'm here to wrestle, beat your ass, and keep it pushing. She's not like, uh, what, what what's, what's, what's the old girl named uh, Mandy uh, Fire and Desire? She's nothing like that because that girl is gay. But she has sex appeal. What the fuck is her name? Oh my god. Mandy. Mandy. Okay, whatever. Fire and Desire. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I cannot remember her name. It's right on the tip of my tongue. And right now she's having a great run fucking over her partner with Otis and them. But um, she is also gay and she took the reins to you know let everybody know that she gay she proud she want to represent whoop de whoop de whoop and that's Sonya Deville there you go and that's cool now if you put Sonya Deville and Shayna Baszler together Sonya Deville has some type of sex appeal you know she's a she's very pretty she's got the long black hair she wears makeup but she's rough 
So it's it, it's like okay, she could do both. Shayna, you put makeup on Shayna. She got a pretty face, but it ain't nothing about her that says, you know, go upstairs and fantasize me while you beat your meat. Like there's nothing about Shayna that gives that off, and I think that is one of the reasons why she will be hindered with Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard. Um, she came to the main roster very unceremoniously she came with one of the best um smackdown episodes where they had got stuck in saudi arabia so they had to throw some together and when i tell you that was one of the best smackdown episodes in the forever it went down history nxt ran wild it was that was before survivor series um you know she did her thing everybody was excited so you know before Shayna had her match with becky lynch she came into the ring and bit the back of Becky's neck. Her and Becky was in each other's face talking shit. I think that bite in the back of Becky's neck and the blood, I'm not really sure where they was going with that. Um, they could have capitalized off that. They could have had her running around biting motherfuckers and just like cutting up, you know, could have been doing all that. But she bit, she bit Becky only to eventually lose to Becky. And I think that took the mystique of her rough and rawness away on the main roster. So she ended up in this weird rigmarole with Nia Jax and, you know, um, who was Nia Jax, Carmella, uh, old girl, Kabuki Warrior number one. I forgot her name. Kabuki Warrior number one. Um, and old girl. Who, I guess, uh, Dana Brooke, you know, she was the, the clown of the show at, um, the briefcase. And my thought process is all off. What the fuck is this? The briefcase. The briefcase pay-per-view. Money in the bank. Um, Oscar. Okay, so she was, she, you know, she getting ragged all by Naya and beat up and, and I thought she was going to get the briefcase. We all thought she was going to get the briefcase. She didn't get the briefcase. She lost against... Um, Becky Lynch in the previous, you know, pay-per-view. And it was just, like, really confusing. And everyone's like, okay, what's going on with this push? Because y'all built this woman to be this monster to take down Becky Lynch. And she should have won that belt then, but she did not. So, fast forward. Here's an article from June 13th. Um, Shayna Baszler possibly lost push in WWE. And the article says, according to previous reports, Shayna Baszler was set to win the 2020 Women's Royal Rumble and the Money in the Bank matches, which we all thought. However, plans were changed in both cases, and Shayna has been visibly, vis virtually absent from TV, which is weird because y'all got fucking Charlotte SpongeBob SquarePants running all over the place, and Shayna is the would would have been the biggest heel on Raw. Period. Because Shayna Baszler and Oscar is the money match, in my opinion. So I'm not really, I'm not really understanding the thought process here. Anyway, Paul Heyman, he's out. He was also a staunch supporter of Baszler, but like I said, he's gone. He's back to his in ring. That's it. This might have an effect on her push. Y'all know your boy Dave Meltzer. He discussed why Shayna Baszler is absent from WWE television. Meltzer said that the main programs in the women's division are between Oscar and Nia, which should come to an end tonight. I totally forgot it was a pay per view. I'm not going to be reviewing pay per views because I know that y'all don't really care. To hear what I think of these pay-per-views, it don't get no views, so I won't be um, reviewing them. I'm just going to post my picks and give a grade and keep it pushing. I think y'all are more, I think y'all like my topics and, you know, these type of videos as opposed to me sitting down giving you how I feel about the pay-per-view. Unless it's like a big first time type thing, like WrestleMania. But anyway... So, Oscar and Nia Jax, so hopefully that's going to end tonight, because I don't see why Nia Jax, and with her blown out knees, is going to continue to be 
fucking up the talent because no one's ready for Naya. And and I, I don't know if Oscar's ready for Naya. So, I don't know. Um, and then, after that, she's going to be involved with Charlotte Flair after Oscar's done with Naya. So, Shayna has no reason to be around right now. He said that she would come back soon, but not at this moment. He also speculates that the reason she's off TV is simply that she does not suffer. It's simply so that she does not suffer an unnecessary defeat because WWE still has plans for her in the future. Now, if they waiting for Becky Lynch to give birth, heal, breastfeed, um, see the baby walk, have his first... Um, uh, you know, have his first word and all that. Hey, Shane ain't gonna be on TV for a long motherfucking time. And I don't know if Sharonda Rousey even wanna be bothered right now from the looks of things because she's a Paul Heyman girl. So I don't know if she wants to be bothered either. It's noted that Baszler was very much a Heyman project and I don't know where Vince comes in with her. Meltzer added that the stark reality is that a decade previously, and this I agree with David Meltzer 100, 3,000%, Shayna Baszler would never have made it to the NXT, let alone the main shows. He clarified this is hardly a negative on Baszler, but it's simply a reference to the standards of how female wrestlers should look 10 years ago. And I'm going to pause right here and come back when I'm done. Let's talk about that. The name of the topic of this video is called The Undesirables, right? Um... I won't even say 10 years ago. I would say in the last five years, NXT talent has a look. NXT talent, they are worried about they they wait, they wrestling. They want to wrestle. They don't want to be a valet. They don't want to do none of that cute shit that, you know, um, Miss Debbie's and all them women from back in the day used to do. They want to do the Trish Stratus. They want to do the Lita. You know, even though Trish and Lita still had their titties out and their stomach out, they was in there flipping and slamming on them hard titties and exploding their um, implants all the up and through the ring. But these ladies now, they want to wrestle. They want to wrestle the men. They want to um, make a statement. They want to be the first. They want to open doors. They want to do all of that. Everybody ain't running around here like the Bella Twins no more. Okay? It's true. You look at the NXT roster. You got, let me see, Shotzi Blackheart. You got Tegan Knox. Okay. Um, Candice LeRae. I think if you give, you know, keep Candice blonde and bubblegum, she probably could get far. Aaliyah, I, that woman been on the NXT roster since NXT's inception. I don't know what the fuck is going on with her. Chelsea Green, I'm going to be honest, she kind of looks like a horse in the face, but she got a cute little body, so he probably could do something with her. Um, Io Shirai, listen, you can't fuck Io Shirai up. You just put her there and let her do her thing. Vince McMahon can fuck Io Shirai up. She ain't butt naked. She cute when she's a, a face, and when she's a heel, You what you getting right now is what you getting. Um, Jessamine Duke, I, I don't even know, since Shane ain't there, ain't nothing for them to do. Uh, Casey, I think she, Kaden Carter, she black, she ain't gonna be doing nothing. Marina Shafir ain't doing nothing, cause Jessamine ain't doing nothing, and Shane are going. Mercedes Martinez is the second coming of Tamina, but she might fare better, cause... I mean, she sticks with Dakota Kai. Maybe she'll fare, uh, fare better. I don't know. Or whoever she's with now. I forget. Candice LeRae. I don't know. Mia Yim. Listen. Mia Yim. Her gimmick is not going to work on the main roster. I can tell you that now. I be, I be, I be. That's not going to work. Because we already got Bianca Belair and the bubblegum chewing gangster girl ghetto fabulous thing going on. So that, I don't know what's going to happen to her. Raquel Gonzalez, uh, she just got up there and ain't ain't really kind of fizzled out. Rhea Ripley's momentum and everything else is completely destroyed. Um, Santana Garrett, I don't even see her, and I forgot who who that's even is. Scarlett Bordeaux is next to uh, what's his name, Killer Cross, and y'all super excited about her. Scarlett Bordeaux on the main roster, Raw or SmackDown, will be a superstar. Strictly for the way she looks. I can see her and um 
Lacey Evans walking around chewing gum, talking about meow, meow, meow. I can see them. Uh, like I told you, Shati Blackheart is not desirable. Vanessa Bourne, uh, uh, listen, she is a throwback to the old school WWE ladies. So she might, she got her thighs out. She might could do something. Zia Lee, Zia Lee be fucking people up too. So I don't know, but she's a cute Chinese woman and they probably going to roll her out when they go on the European Asian tours or whatever like that. Other than that, I don't know what to tell you. Cause it's just like it, it ain't it ain't even it ain't even cooking. And then look who you got. You got Alexa Bliss. Her little booty chicks is out. You know she willing to show her fake titties, so she won't be up there. She blonde. You know Carmelo. She as long as she keep her hair blonde, she won't be getting a. You know they'll put her on the forefront. Dana Brooke. As long as she stop getting them lips plumped up. And do more than a, a flip into a, a elbow drop or whatever the fuck she be doing. Uh, like I said, Lacey Evans, Mandy Rose got them thighs out and that jean outfit. She got a nice body. She fabulous. I don't really care for her mouth. But for whatever reason, Mandy Rose isn't where she should be considering the way she looks. So I'm confused about that. So, you know, I don't know. That's weird to me. And then, you know, like I said, the undesirables, I can sit here and name you. The undesirables on Raw, Kyrie Sane, uh, Liv Morgan, Natalia, Ruby Riot, Shayna Baszler. The undesirables on SmackDown in terms for the women are um, Ember Moon, if she ever comes back, Mickey James. Naomi, Nikki Cross, Sonya Deville, and Tamina. And I told y'all the undesirables over there on NXT is basically shit. Aaliyah, uh, I'm gonna say Dakota Kai, Jessamine Zu, Kaden Carter, Marina Shafia, Mercedes Martinez, Raquel Gonzalez, uh, Ray Ripley, Santana Garrett, Shati Blackheart, Tia Knox, Vanessa Bourne, and Zia Lee. Well, Vanessa Bourne, I'm going to leave her or Zia Lee. Them, them ladies, they better hope they get some type of push when they get on the main roster. Unless they be, they ready to go blonde and show some titties. And I don't know how Liv Morgan got fucked up. The way he had her looking. It's a lot going on, but it's, it's some desi undesirables. So, the article goes on to say, 10 years, she wouldn't even been in the WWE, let alone anything else. That's why, you know, Triple H was trying to go into a different a different type of, you know, he wanted to stick to the woman's evolution that was started in NXT. And, you know, these women want to wrestle. They don't want to just be, you know, to throw back to the divas. And that's why that era was, like, so uneven and... Because they was trans transitioning from the diva to the women's champion, you know, women's champion match. That that era, if you watch those old episodes, it was like a battle. Especially when you had AJ Lee roasting the divas. Because she was coming in there kicking motherfuckers with fucking Converse on. So, he goes on to say, it was then said that Vince... That both Vince McMahon and Bruce Pritchard have old mindsets. The women's revolution changed women's wrestling in general in the WWE. However, with them in charge, there's going to be a regression. You're not going to see no real women's wrestling with Bruce Pritchard and fucking Vince McMahon. You're just not. And honestly, outside of the talent of different ethnicities, um, the women are really going to catch it because um, unless they're ready to do that sexism bullshit, um, you ugly, I'm pretty, you dumb, I'm smart, you old, I'm young, you know that little high school kitty shit they be having the ladies doing. These women are over fucking 25, some of them are pushing 40, and they got they out there having these little spats over dumb shit. Unless unless something happens from then on, I don't I don't see Shayna Baszler getting a push that substantial after Charlotte pulverizes the fucking women's division on Raw again and 
I could see her giving fucking Shayna Bays a big boot to hell. But if you want to see Shayna and all of the gals that are undesirable, they down there on the main event. They down there on main event. A whole a main event's like a whole nother world. Storylines and all kinds of shits going on. So check it out. It ain't as bad as folks make it seem. But I really wish that some of my fans or girls I want to see more would be on, you know, the main roster getting they shine. Shit's fucked up. And it's going to be fucked up. Some more. Alright y'all, tell me what y'all think about Shayna Baszler and her being undesirable and the undesirables of the WWE in, in general and what's what you think Bruce Pritchard and Vince McMahon finna do to these women and finna do to to the um other ethnicities on the show. What you think he what did what you think they gonna have them do? They already got the street profits and the Viking Raiders having fucking foot you know, running up and down the field, throwing axes and playing golf and shit as opposed to fucking wrestling. I know the revival is like, see, look y'all, look, that's what they was gonna have us do. Look. No, we not clowns. The revival just did have one of the fucking I mean, the match was fabulous against the Butcher and the Blade. I don't, I don't know where the bunnies at, but it was a good ass match. It was a good ass match. The revival, they just want to give you regular wrestling. And WWE is on some other shit right now, so I don't even know what's going to happen to the ladies. So I'm going to leave it right here. Tell me what y'all think. Make sure you subscribe. I'm still on my road to 300. I'm not going to stop. All right, y'all. Catch you on the next time. Later.